Us. Well, w- welcome everybody. Today we're joined by one of the most um, colourful sumo personalities on the planet, and uh, he goes by the name of Kintamayama, and um, he's someone that I've looked up to for a long time. I've uh, known him um, way before uh, Facebook, and um, and I've always he's had a big influence on me. He's actually um, probably. <laughs> probably kept me from um, saying what I really think to some of the people that give their opinions on sumo because he's always so gracious. He always has um, a good word to say. You can tell, probably tell that um, he's holding back a little bit sometimes, but he's been an incredible um, wordsmith. I always uh, uh, run things by him. If I've got a speech to write or an April Fool's joke to pull on everybody and uh, I run it past Kintamayama first. And um, I also told my children about him, and now they think that song Karma Chameleon is uh, goes Tama 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 Kintama Chameleon. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I can't sing at all. But he, he can. Uh, he, he's um, also a musician. So you can tell us a little bit about um, if you had to describe your position in the sumo world, what would you liken yourself to? I, I was thinking of like a a movie character or something but I think you're you're a unique personality and I don't think it'd do it justice to to associate you with with something else so what would you describe your your position in the sumo world it's a, as? It's, it's very simple it's not complicated I'm just a very very avid sumo fan on the verge of uh, being institutionalized because when there is a basho I actually spend eight to ten hours a day uh, you know, uh, 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 something that has to do with sumo, like doing the videos or doing the translations of the, you know, of the Rikshi talk, which I find the most interesting, because it's very interesting to hear them say, well, I'll do my best tomorrow, you know, all of them. <laughs> but sometimes some guy comes out, you know, I mean, he, he's retired, but he used to have excellent insights. Kaisei also has a few things to say, but I, I would describe myself as just a sumo fan. I'm just a professional musician as, as a hobby. My real life <laughs> is sumo. <laughs> yeah. Sad. Well, I, I, like, I like to call it the Church of Sumotology, and you're definitely. Yeah, that's that, the, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good way of putting it. Probably the, I don't know what, what we call you, the uh, the Pope or the High Priest or the, uh, the no, Oracle. I'm not or, the Pope or that. First of all, I'm Jewish. Let's not go there, you know. With the <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> I'm probably the rabbi, the rabbi. <laughs> rabbi, that's it. <laughs> you're definitely a voice. You're definitely a voice for oh. people in, in like a messengery sumo because you have been doing it since access was very Latin for anybody uh, that wasn't from Japan or wasn't like, fluent in Japanese and knew where to look and things. So, so you've definitely been a, a, a door that's open for everybody. And I think that's what's garnered you a lot of fans and respect for the work that you have put in for everybody, definitely. Thank you very much. I'm blushing, you know, but... but... That's I can probably see. pretty pretty much true. I mean, fact wise, you know, mm-hmm. that's what happened. Aye. Now I'm going to try something new. You gave me an idea when I read that you said that you're a fan of Hari Te, you know, the um, yeah. the rapid rapid slap. So if it's done try. well and not like you know Takagenji, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, that might. So what what I'm going to do, and um, normally I, I think about doing this at the end, but You've got to have a good touchy eye. So we, I'm going to ask you 20, 20 questions, Question. like quick harate interrogation. A quick fire and round. That's, it's bad to call that's it. right. It's so are you ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sexiest technique. Sexiest technique? Yes. Ipose oi. What can be more sexy than that? That's right. I mean, it, it stimulates uh, copulation at some point, <laughs> or, or or it stops it if, uh, if, it, if whatever. It. Coitus interruptus, but it's there. <laughs> um, ugliest technique. Ugliest technique. Yes, I, I would say hatakikomi. I, I I don't like the the bad hatakikomi. I like a good henka. That's a different yep. thing. But a bad hatakikomi with moving backwards, I don't like. Mm-hmm. Sexiest rikshi. Sexiest rikshi ikioi, but uh, he doesn't count anymore. Uh, you know, oh, well. <laughs> I'd say maybe today is probably Okinawa. 
of Hinomi. Yeah. And most most unattractive Rikshi or most un unsexy. Show Hosan, Show Hosan. Back in Makuchi, Show Hosan. And why, why is that? He's ugly. <laughs> he's a punk, but I like him a lot, but you know, he's not he's, he's so unsexy that you know <laughs> you would rather become a priest and but than, but but he's <laughs> But I like I like I like his you know his bravado and uh, and his his punkness. I used to call him the punk. Remember? Oh, right. Yeah. So he's, he's a punk, you reckon but, that? But, but he suddenly reckon? found himself. You know, I was sure he was on, on his way home, but you know, he's suddenly back in Makucha. I don't know. Mm. So do you reckon uh, Shibata Yama can use his face as uh, to make gorilla biscuits or something? Push it into oh, the dough? Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scare away some um, demons. Scare away the virus. Uh, best Japanese commentator. Oh, Kitano Fuji, come on! There's, you know, by by far, there's no. He's the only one, and he is really funny. Except I don't get to hear the Japanese since I do the English side, side do, lately. I've been doing, it. but when I get to hear the Japanese, he's very clever and surprisingly yeah. opinionated. You know, they're not allowed to say this so much, and he says whatever he feels. He doesn't. Oh, does he? Because I um, I, I really like him. He, he came up to me once and said. Uh, Hey, you're John O'Fuji, and I've seen you on TV and started pouring my beers. Really? And I, wasn't, I wasn't sure who it was at first. No, Katrina no. whispered in my ear, don't tell him you're John O'Fuji after Chiona Fuji. Tell him you're <laughs> he hates John O'Fuji after Kitano Fuji. That's right. So, yeah, he got me very drunk. So that was the buzz. Oh, he's, 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 the, a, he's a fun guy. Yeah. The worst Japanese commentator, the... Uh, Sort of most I don't know, there's so many. All the, all the guys that come in for the first time, except Kisena Sato, who surprised everyone. Goe, mm. was on lately, he was really bad. He's boring. And oh, even Tirao, who was an excellent rikshi, is, 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 is so serious, you know, and, and when he's commentating that. It's, yes. I, that puts me off, I don't know. But I like them all, you know. I don't like to say a single bad word about any... Yeah, you know, that's right. Tirao seemed a bit, a bit grumpy, I know, whenever grumpy. I get... I don't, I don't like grumpy people, you know. I'm grumpy <laughs> enough. When I get my photo taken next to a grumpy Rikshi, I look grumpy too. I'm always like, I, I got pictures with him while he was active, and I got pictures yeah. with him lately when I was in Tokyo two years ago. That's what I said. He wasn't very nice also. He said, said some stuff about me in Japanese yeah. without knowing that I know Japanese. Yeah, that's right. He said, oh, oh look at this as a fanboy, whatever, something he did out oh. oh. And then I said, I speak Japanese. And he said, oh, he was a bit... <laughs> True story. Outside of Mukubikan, 1998. What? Tarao? Tarao. That is brilliant. No way. Came, I, I was standing outside the hair, Izutsu. That was Izutsu. He just came out in, in short pants. Right. And he was talking to some other guys. And I said, can you take a picture with me? You know, in basic Japanese, not the real Japanese. And he looked at his friend. He said, oh, this guy looks like he's, he, he's, he's some the good stuff for you or something like that. Some some <laughs> reference to I don't know what, and I said you know I, you know I speak Japanese, and he said oh no, no, no. He took the picture he was not smiling in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to show you my photo with him. Now who's the um, who's been the loosest cannon in the sumo world over the oh, years? Oh Haku, come on, that's that's an easy question. <laughs> the answer quit. loosest cannon when he knows that he has nothing to lose. Yeah, he, he's he's kind of tired of it and he knows it'll get criticized whatever exactly. the minute uh, you know you have nothing to lose is when you lose control of your child like you know if you're a yeah. kid at, at 12 age of 12 he said what the fuck are you gonna do mm. go to your room okay i love my room what are you gonna do he can't do anything yeah. you know that's when you, some kids realize at the age of 18 some kids never realize some realize at the age of 12 and how will realize at some point that, you know, when they started really getting into me, why did you clap three times? Why did you sneeze? Why did you... He said, whatever I do, I can't win. So I, I'll do what I feel like. Mm, yeah. So he does this matter with Yoshikaze, you know, which was the longest, ten, you know, two minutes I ever had in my life. <laughs> that was, a, that was really, that felt like five hours. Mm, yeah. he was standing there and, and gesturing, you know, as if, as if he can do it. He knows he can't do it. This was yeah, by was... far the craziest thing any Yokozuna ever did. Yeah, it was it was awkward. I was actually oh. expecting you to say uh, Takatoriki. He's like the um... Takatoriki is gone. I never liked him. He was, you know, when he was active, everybody hated him. He yeah. was always this guy. And, and also, you can you can ask guys like Konishki, the guys active against him. They hated facing because he was so violent. 
Yeah. You know, with the, he was he was a pusher. He was violent. They hated facing. Well, you were you were the one. He looks like an asshole. Yeah, doesn't he? You were one of the first to um to recognize us as Shorty, who was the uh, oh yeah, the next Nakazuna at the time, and everybody true story, was true story, man. They used to run, didn't they? So even when he was in the lower Makushta. ranks, they, uh, he was in Makushta. I saw the training. I came home and I wrote to, that was the mailing list back there. Mm -hmm. I said, this is the next Yokozuna. And he was in Makushta. And he was the next Yokozuna. Because I never, ever have seen such training in my life. Right. He was training for two hours straight, hitting the heads of the other guys. And everybody was scared to enter the ring. On the one side. On the other side, nobody could get him out of it. Until the guy, Ichinoya, who was my friend, was the oldest Rishi back then. He's the boss of the, of, you know, the administrator. He shouted from the from the kitchen. He said, "Enough, enough! Leave the guys. You're killing everyone." And then I asked hey, Oyakata, "Please, can you, can I take a picture with him? Because Makushta guys are dirt. You cannot do anything." Yeah. And he allowed me, you know, because I'm a foreigner. I spoke Japanese, whatever. You right. know, and I have the picture, and he's in, in, in the black mawashi of the lower rankers. He's not even a white mawashi. He was in Makushta, nice. and I, I was I was blown, I was there. You know, you could feel the power. It's incredible. See. And, See that that is that I'm already a huge, huge fan of Asashoru, you know what I mean? Like I he was the reason that, that I became a lifelong fan when I was a young boy watching how psychotic he was. And see you saying all that, that is just reaffirmed why I say that he was just next level, like he was he was a different animal for everybody else and oh exactly. brilliant. And he also, like all the Mongolians, reached the, the, the stage where he said, Okay, what are they gonna do to me? Mm. And he started, you know, yeah. all the problems, and he became crazy, and he went, and right. he, he was depressed, and everything it was a terrible time. And he came back and got the usual again. That's yeah. how they work. Everybody forgets that he came back and he got the usual. Mm. That's it's right. not that he came back yeah. and it was really pathetic. You know, he got the usual, and then he had to got into a fight in Rapongi. Okay, yeah. you know, okay. Yeah, he um he he liked a he liked a bit of a fight. I, I, when, the way he got his mojo back, I thought it was fascinating. He took off on a on horseback with nothing much than uh, more than a hunting knife and a bit of yaki niku sauce. That's, and uh, that, he was that's bathing the Mongolia, in that's the Mongolian way. And that's him. frozen he, rivers. He was a warrior. Yeah. He is a true yeah. warrior. He's not a, he doesn't have the sumo, you know, the 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 the, 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 the stuff that the Yokozuna have. Mm -hmm. Him and Hapo, they have different stuff, but it, it's it's legitimate. The Japanese that's they right. cannot expect all the Mongolians to become total Japanese. It won't happen ever. Ever, maybe yeah. Teruro Fuji is the, is the new guy. I don't know, but Teruro Fuji ate so much shit in the last two years that he's you know he's just happy to be there. Yeah, not not a, no less a Yokozuna, which is you know you can't get your head around this. What happened to you? We've all been following sumo for years. We all know that this is impossible to achieve. Impossible yeah. With, yeah. without any knees. He can't yeah. bend to take the money. Yeah, you should, you know, see how we bend. He sits and he crouch. He half crouches, you know. Yeah, yeah. Leans on one leg with his elbow. Yeah, but you know he has a technique up. already. He knows how right. to do it now. He, right. He's so used to it. Mm -hmm. But one okay. bad fall and he's he's gone. No, Nobody sure. realizes this. One bad fall, he's gone. On the wrong knee. That's, that's it. Well, a lot of that is 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 due to his technique of um, lifting where. It, it puts all the weight on his knees. Whereas Hakao still used to be able to lift, but he had the way he did it. The Mongolians have told me, gave him a way of escaping from the knee injuries. Um, I don't I don't know exactly how they do it, but they pick me up and show me. <laughs> um, the, the, thing there are ways that, that, the thing with Tiruna Fuji that not most people notice is that because he's so tall, he has a problem getting into a, an inside grip. And it's yeah. not that he likes to go with the outside grip and go, but he just has it because he's so tall and he is very tall. And his opponents, you know, Miyogi, all these guys are one meter 80, 78, 80. He has a problem of getting under and getting a double. I have, I don't remember how long ago I saw him taking a double Morozashi inside grip. It's always on the top. And then it, 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 the stress is on the knees, of course. Yeah. That, that's a, such a tall. difficult thing to pull yeah. off the outside grip. Normally, if you have the outside grip, you you're out. out. You 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 lost. You know, the minute you get the, the guy gets the morozashi, and and in, in, in his case, if he gets the morozashi, you know he's going to win. Mm. All right. Now, best oyokata. 
Vesto Yakata, Satogata K, but I'm I'm not I'm not uh, you know I'm I'm imp I'm partial. I mean I know the guy really nicely. They were in Israel, you know, all Sadogata K the king. Yeah, only that's one hair. That was the only time that ever happened that they allowed one hair. That's I got my very friendly as well. I got huh? That's my favorite hair as well. I've oh, he's such a nice guy. And, you know, and, and and look at the look at the hair. Aye. So many good and so Aye. many new guys Aye. coming up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got Koto Yusho. You got some guys. They're gonna be Sekitorian right. by the end of the year, or maybe right. at the beginning of next year. But he's gonna have ten Sekitorian in a second, mm -hmm. and he's really nice and easygoing. I also knew his father because he came also to Israel. He right. was already on a wheelchair and everything, but he was here. Oh, right. And I saw Koto Nowaka Jr. when he was twelve. I have pictures of him when he was twelve, but they came here, mm -hmm. and he was already wow. groomed to become a, a, a rikshi. That's for sure. He was a I, shy 12 year old kid and he wasn't that big. And suddenly, look at this guy. He's gonna, I don't know, Ozaki, but Sanyaki for sure, regular, like his father, for sure, mm -hmm. minimum. I don't know what else. Um, yeah, you got you got hit the jackpot when uh, Sado Gotake came to Israel. Oh, we, that we got, a, that, that's once in a lifetime. Once we got Minezaki, Minezaki Bear to come out to um, Australia once. And uh, I, uh, I was sort of put in charge of them, but at night time they used to station somebody at the um, at the at the front desk, so I couldn't lead them astray and take them. Out. Uh, 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 and then they had someone else on the back door because they knew I'd take them out for mischief. Here, here they they had a very very tight itinerary. They went everywhere. Oh. But yeah. I can tell you a, a story that I never told anyone. I was, you know, who was doing them when they, when they, they did a whole boyo here because there were seventeen rich. Yeah. So I was the guy doing the. In Japanese, doing the doyo iri of the oh, really? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you got you know, uh, Sanda me twenty four from here. This guy, the whole thing I did. And then I was talking to Sadoga. I said, "We're gonna have a tournament. Who, I mean, how are you gonna decide who the winner is?" So he said, "We're gonna do a knockout, you know, with the, with the, only the sekitori. That was Koto Shogeku, Koto Mitsuki, and Koto Oshu. Oh wow! I said the three of them. I said, I said that Tomoe said, you know, this can. Uh, how long? Uh, Will it go on? He said, how long do you want it to go? <laughs> you know, because it was three, because they don't want to hurt. They, want, they don't want to injure each other. They do uh, yeah. And they did all kinds of techniques. They, they did Izori. He did an Izori, yeah. which is oh, dangerous. Wow. You know, oh, him over. Yeah. And yeah. then they said, I said, so they made it exciting. They made Koto Oshu lost this. And of course, the winner in the end was Koto Oshu because he was the highest ranked. He was the Ozzy. Mm -hmm. The other were still, they were still Sekiwaka. And both became Ozzy. I find Koto Shigiku to be quite a friendly man. Um, oh, he was so been, nice. By the I'm, way, today I'm good friends with him on the on the internet. We, we, we talk to each other in Japanese, you know, on uh, Facebook. I speak to Koto Shigiku very, all the time. All the very, yeah, he's very, aye. very, very active and he loves aye. it. Aye. And he loves it because he never knew he told me that he aye. never knew there were so many foreign fans that liked him. I he had no idea. I he was shocked when he found out that I was from Scotland, and I think I, that's what made me no stand idea. out. To him. He's, he's reveling in it. He loves I, it. He loves it. Mm -hmm. I yeah, he was good really guy. nice. They were all very nice, by the way. Nobody I, was except Koto Oshu, who was he's Bulgarian. He wasn't that nice. Yeah, he gets he a okay. Bit. I mean, he, no, he, he, was, he was correct. You know, I mean, he right. was. You know, it was okay. But the other guys were really nice and funny, and you know. Well, to see them um, pre-ranged in the wild, they're a lot, uh, lot different. Where they don't have to, um, they're not as stressed out, and they uh, there's not as many protocols to follow. Of course, no, but Sadogata runs a tight ship. They were yeah. they were on time, and nobody went went away to shopping, and they didn't go to the girls and whatever. They were okay. <laughs> they were straight they didn't forward. Take them out. No, the <laughs> scared. They are scared shit with them. Believe me. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're very. He, I saw him also getting angry a few, a few times. Whoa, they got in, in place immediately, including all the all the, the top rankers. You know. Yeah, it's they, amazing. Yeah, you have to shout yeah, yeah. every now and then to put them back. You know, the, the, the young kids with the hormones. You know, that mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you're a sumo or if you're a plus guy. Same thing. Well, that brings me to the next question: the, uh, <laughs> well, the the most kibishi or the worst oyo kata, the the. Um, the hardest, probably Chiono Fuji. Yeah, I don't. I, I have no inside information, but I think Chiono Fuji was very, very strict. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't like to say anything bad about him, but um, he had uh, 
Um, he was extremely strict and I knew I used to go visit every day in Kyushu and um, he would, uh, if, if he looked grumpy, you just didn't go near him. But one day I remember trying to look in through, it was like, it was cold and you could barely see through a, a hole in the steamed up windows and this, this Japanese guy wouldn't let me in, have a look. And uh, anyway, Chio Fuji came in and invited me in. I left it's the other incredible. Crowd. That's incredible. You were very lucky, but he's not a, yeah. he was never a nice guy. But not only that, because uh, I'd met him um, in Sydney um, wow. when they when they all came, and uh, yeah, we played drinking games with him. And um, that's a not only that, I mean, if he knew you, that I mean, out of the street, no way he's going to let a foreigner. So. Yeah, I know. I was no extremely way, no lucky. Way. No way. But th that day, we also had my Naomi and Kitano Fuji showed up, and the oh, little man playing the drums. What's that called? The um, the taiko, yeah, the taiko. Yeah, when they when they um, do that. But what's the ceremony? Called where they go around to each hair and announce um, the basho. And I think it's I called, what it's uh, called. Uh, whatever I forgot now. Yeah, I know. What yeah. It is. So, um, Taiko well, Mana, Taiko your, Mana the banners. Your most memorable bout. My most memorable mm. bout. There's so many very well. Of course, oh, no, it's a hard one. I'll tell you. One. You can guess probably. <laughs> the most memorable bout by far is when Takanohana came back and won the issue against Musashimaru. Of course. Yeah. That because we, were there, we saw it in real time, and the fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy is, you remember that? We used to can hardly yep. see the faces of the rich, not like today, yeah. everything in 4K, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was really, really, I mean, a Hollywood writer couldn't write it better. Yeah. There's nothing better than a, uh, a Yusho Ketesa, and is there a playoff? Um, Listen, last basho, but before, you know, Shahaku was last basho on the final day against Teruno Fuji. Yeah. I got all my friends. Who think I'm crazy to watch it, and they all went bonkers. They all were oh, sitting wow. and screaming wow. because it was incredible. It was an incredible mm -hmm. bout, and the whole thing of both of them coming with a history of this guy coming back that if he doesn't do well, they're going to kick him out, and this guy coming back from Johnny Dunn. You know, this is whoever likes sumo. We still don't understand the full meaning of what happened. I right. believe it. in three, four years we'll say, "Wow, that that was something." Because yeah. it doesn't happen. We're going to have three, four years of boredom now because there's no one there. You know, there's no responsible adult left. The minute Haku was out, who, who, who's going to be a Kozuna? Takakeshi. The way he looks Shodai, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the Shodai guy, but no way. Who? Mm. Oh, sure you are. Unless he, he really, you know, starts picking it up, then I'm not sure. Who's going to be a Kozuna? Who's going to lead the pack? You know, I don't remember any time since I've been following sumo in 1965, when I was 12 years old, that there wasn't a two, at least two dominant Yokozuna, at least. Mm -hmm. Kaiho, Kashiwado, Chiono Fuji, Kitano Fuji. They were all there always, and these guys were, were, were larger than life. Look at the other guys. There's no one. All of them are smaller than life. You know, there's not even a guy who equals life. Who? Give me one well, that... name. Chiono Fuji, he's the kicking yeah. bomb. He yeah. can leave in two seconds. You know, on the first day of the next basho, he can drop on his knees, and that's it. There's no like, sincere. If he was healthy, I would say, wow, this guy's a beast, you know, but he's not healthy. He's not one, one, one question I did have was um, just to go off the uh, the the Harate questions was um, every generation says that the last generation were a bunch of pussies. Yeah, Do you think yeah. that out nostalgia gives us too much? Um, of course. In, in, every romantic, sport. in every sport. In every romantic. But, Memories in every sport, baseball, era. soccer, football, mm -hmm. in every sport. In my day, we used to have this deck. Yeah. You can't compare, you know. And really, yeah. in baseball, they say, oh, no, 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 no. basketball, also, they say, wow, you know, the days of Michael Jordan. But, you know, it's different. You, you can't compare apples to oranges and, you know. Well, I don't whatever. understand all the, all the people arguing about whether he's a goat or not. I, we never use that expression in my country. Because it's, it's a, first of all, it's a dumb expression. And the it is. Of, there's no, there's no argument, you know. Anyone yeah. who loves a sport, and this guy broke all possible records, not by two wins. The former record was 32 usual. This guy's at 45 usual. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like he has 33 and a half and with an asterisk because he won with the Fusencio, you know? Right. Yeah. 45 usual. 1,800 wins. And 14 years as a Yokozuna. You know, this is incredible. Forget it. Nobody was even close. Now, the question is, of course, did he have normal uh, opposition. Like in the days of, when, when I when I interviewed Konishi, he said, listen, in our days, he, he'd be barely make it to Ozeki. That's the words of Konishi. 
Yeah. Which I disagree with. I think you know yeah. he, he would do that well. Was very he, of course, he would never have 45. You should get it. Yeah. I mean, with Akebono, Takanoana, Fushimaru, and these guys around, he will not have 45. You should. They were giants. In that, that era was what I remember the most. I was in Japan for a lot of it, and uh, we've even had um, Akebono come out and uh, uh, um, come to one of our tournaments, and uh, he was just an absolute legend. The way he had a he had a kill switch for such a gentle guy with a kind of Elvis smile about him. Yeah. He, he, he sat me down and he showed me his favorite bouts. And it was always the look on his face when he smashed Takano Hana was just priceless. Yeah, because like, there was, the the, the, the the was really famous with the mm. brothers against the, against the foreigners. Yeah. Which, by the way, Futagoyama Oyakata was the one who was cultivating this whole shit. He didn't allow them to speak with them. They were not allowed to speak with Akebono. There was a there was a interview with the Wakanohana when he went to visit Akebono, who's very very sick at the hospital, and he told the guys, he said, "I never spoke to him. This is the first time that I'm speaking." To him. Yeah, yeah. My father did not allow us to speak to him. Yeah, he had and a lot of Akebono later, had a lot of respect for them. But that was also part of the part of the of the mystique, you know. Yeah. And every day you had three, four Yokozunas, but not like today. That he's not there. This guy is injured. You're not there. There's, there's no, no comparison. There's no comparison. That's yeah. for sure. But he's the goat. You can't take that away from him. It's not his fault that there's no opposition. You know, mm. but you can't blame him for that. So, what would you say is the most controversial bout? Oh, that's so, I, 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 that I can't add. So you, can, you, can, uh, well. you can hanker on any of these. Oh, no, the no, there were so many with, with even with the monoi with the video that they got it wrong. There were so many. Yeah. Listen, the most controversial about, of course, was before your times when Taiho had the ah, 67. Yeah. He, he was going for Futabayama's consecutive record of 69. Aye. Right? And he won the bout in 67. He, his opponent, Itai, take, he stepped out first. And the, all the, the next day, he got, he got the loss, of course. The next day was in the papers. The next day was when they decided to put in the video. Yeah. That's, yes. you know, that's mm -hmm. Sumo's video since 1969. This is, you know, we're supposed to be the, the most ancient sport and years before football and baseball and whatever had replays, Sumo had replays. Then next day, because this is un un unforgivable. There was no argument. This foot was out first. The Shippan got it wrong. So that's if you're right. talking controversial, I don't think it gets more controversial than nah. that. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, actually, I, I have a question that you may be able to ask about Taiho. I have a recollection of a story about when he, when they fled the Sakhalin Islands, yeah. when the Russians were coming, there, there were three ships that set sail for uh, Hokkaido. Yeah. And because there were, it was after the war, but because there were um, a lot of sea mines around, two of the ships sunk. Taiho was on the third ship. I had no, then, never heard of never heard of that. Um, well, I've, I'll have to look it up, I think. But then, no, so then you, the story you goes. Probably read it somewhere. They heard about a big kid that uh, would would have been great for someone. They're looking for him, and they um they found him um, sitting in the back of a truck, about to become a lumberjack. And if they were fifteen minutes later, uh, he would have been off into the woods. Being life, a lumberjack. Was, life was full of these stories, and you know he had yeah. the high, he had the height of that. That he was well, but that, that was that was the, the, the days. The days they were all the hiding. Like the, all the years. Koreans, they were all hiding. They were especially the Koreans, you know, and Mianomi, you, not Mianomi, Mianomi. They, you know, you didn't know. Only years later, they, they would admit that they were Koreans because mm. of the anti-Korean and anti-Chinese, heavy Japanese, uh, you know, racist racism. And yeah. Taiho kept it a secret also, but you could see in his face that he's, he, you know, he's, he's a foreigner. He doesn't look Japanese. Mm -hmm. He did not look Japanese. The eyes were, you know, he did not look Japanese. Yeah, he was handsome, wasn't he? Yes, he was very good looking and very, very much loved. But he also had an opponent all the time. He had Kashiwado mm -hmm. on his heels all the time. And he came right. in after, after Tochinishki and, 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 and other guys. He, he was never alone like, like Haku. Haku and the others. He always had some guy nipping at his heels. And Kashiwago managed to take some crucials away from him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, the funniest, funniest bout you've seen. 
It doesn't you... have to be. Mm. Well, I, I don't know if mm -hmm. that was that funny, but I don't know if you remember that. So I showed you against uh, Kyoko Shuzan. <laughs> and Kyoko Shuzan was, uh, was touching his, his hair right. to show that he pulled it. Mm -hmm. And then they met in the parking lot and he broke his mirror, you know. <laughs> ah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. This is stuff, you know, that never happens in Sumo, but it could only be Mongolians. Japanese, no way. <laughs> and there's, there was another bout, which nobody remembers, with uh, Chiyotaikai against Rojo. Remember Rojo the Russian? Mm -hmm. Ah, that's right, yeah. Aye. And, they, and he threw Aye. out, and he looked at yep. it, and they, they were standing, and, and they both got fined. Rojo was kicked out, I think, for three days or whatever. There was something was there. That's I have they started it. shouting at each other. I had yeah, the East, I, I had the I had the East stable master um apparently slapped him right in the face when he walked yeah. backstage. I had that yeah, that's yeah. what happened after that. Yeah. And that's when I think when they started looking out for him with the with the with the with the weed and the and the dope mm -hmm. when they got yeah. caught him and him and his brother. And like, right. suddenly, suddenly for two weeks we had drug tests. We never had drug tests, we don't have them anymore. For two weeks they were drugging, they were kicked out and that Wakachin. Third guy was kicked out. Yeah. Three guys yeah. kicked out. With the two Russians, yeah. suddenly, suddenly they were kicked out. And suddenly there were drug tests. Mm. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, okay, for, the wrong, for the wrong drugs. Because if they want to check, check out the steroids, what are you checking out the weed? That's nonsense. For, for Zuma, you smoke weed, that doesn't make you stronger. It gives you, you the money. For the steroids. <laughs> the problem is that steroids are almost, I think, probably. Some kind of use is, has been done sometime for everyone. I mean, Hakuo, look at him. He was 60 kilos and suddenly he became this gigantic, you know, that raises mm -hmm. questions. And, and you can see the holes on Harumakuji. You know, there are all kinds of thought. Nobody can prove it, of course. I personally, mm -hmm. hope, I pray that it's not true. But they never check for steroids. Never. Right. Yeah. I, I doubt that it's not true. I think that you're right. And it is probably a lot more prevalent than even we would guess about because it's because we don't want we as real sumo fans not looking for the bad part like right. some other people mm -hmm. we, yeah. we truly hope it's not true Aye. It, it's difficult for me to think that it's true it, it, it pains me you know really mm -hmm. well we asked um minami no shima did you hear our podcast yeah, with him he uh, he mentioned it a bit he didn't say he, he never saw anybody using it but um and um i've yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm actually, I, I don't really want to know. I found out some, uh, one of the Russians in amateur sumo that I fought, the world champion, Magiev, he took, he took some, some steroid that increases your libido. <laughs> so, um, um, but they don't, re it's, it's not something that they want to be testing for. They're all on the same. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. suddenly they were tested for, for, for weed, and there had to be a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. I think they were trying to weed out the, the, the bad, the bad right. guys. Mm -hmm. After, after that, that whatever Rojo did then, that was unheard of. You know, that does not happen. Yeah. He's not a Yokozuna. He cannot throw a tantrum after getting thrown out. <laughs> you know? That's right. Mm -hmm. um, I think we all already did this one, but most awkward moment. I, I think, think that, uh, that, that, that should be one of the most popular. It was. It, it was. <laughs> and Takami yeah. Sakari, you know, Takami Sakari, when he won, when he gave us a show. Biasa Shoru, I. <laughs> That's, that was a good one. That was, first of all, an excellent bout. I, absolutely. I'm talking, awkward, I'm talking about his response after he won. I, I he was saying, it's not me. I wasn't here. I'm sorry. I, I probably is going to kill me because he was never good at training anyway. Everyone was killing him on purpose. Right. He said next time, and they met him next time, and he killed it. He right. killed it. Well, I so sure you. I so sure you knew that Takami Sakari couldn't sleep if he knew who he was fighting the next day. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See you we'll tomorrow. Know. That's he would ask not to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was. Yeah, I saw. You could see the the reaction was, "Oh my God, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> you know? I, I'm gonna pay for this at least for the next year in training because this yeah. took up a lot. Azumazeki, you know, he was." The hair yeah. uh, close by, and I uh, and he died, he went off too. He went off too. Yeah. <laughs> now, Rikshi with the best sense of humor. I know you've got Aminishki, a few. Aminishki, Aminishki Kaisei. Yeah. This I know because I do the translations, and they're the only ones that instead of I'll gambarize tomorrow and I'll see that and then we'll be back. 
day by day, they have the usual crap, they always say something funny. Yeah, yeah. Always. Um, Baruto was also pretty funny. I had to get his help one day, and he. Um, oh, that's, that's I'm talking about that. You know, more or less active lately. Yeah, Baruto, yeah, yeah, Baruto yeah. was a completely different. If he wouldn't have been injured, who knows where he. Where, I don't know how he, he's such a cheeky bugger. I don't know how he never got in trouble. He knew, obviously knew when to oh, bow. He, he, he got in trouble, but he, he was caught uh, wearing civilian clothes at a bar with yeah. a hat on his head. You know, as when if like Asanoyama was yeah. thinking that he'd go to a bar and nobody would recognize a one meter <laughs> ninety five Japanese with a with a hat. They would not recognize yeah. him. This is normal. Everyone is one meter ninety five, and you know, with a, with yeah. a, with with some guys around him. Right. And, you know, he's the most one of the most recognizable people in the universe. So you know, but they're stupid. You know, something is wrong. I mean, <laughs> it's Genji, such a mistake. Again, he's smoking a joint on the side of the road and thinking he would. Yeah, oh, no, that I think, if you ask me, that was on purpose. Yeah. He wanted to get kicked out because of his brother. He did not want to continue, and he also, that's why he went overboard with with uh, with Enho in that bout. I yeah. was saying, I was saying. Privately to John, to John Gunning, I said, he, he's acting as if he wants to get kicked out. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't act, you don't do that. Mm -hmm. Smoking on the road, come on! And suddenly someone caught him. I'm hundred percent. You know that the charges were dropped two days ago. Yeah, that's totally right. dropped. All charges dropped. Nothing is going to happen. And he got kicked out for that. That's, yeah, that's you know, nah. A bit harsh, isn't it? He should have yeah. been chosen. So he wanted moment. to get rid of him because he's he, you know he gives some more bad name. Yeah. You don't, need, yeah. you don't need these guys, you know. If you, That's you right. know, okay, if he was Sekiwake, I can say, okay, but I like Takatoriki, but he's good. But he's a floundering in jury for years already. Mm -hmm. And his brother, yeah. probably, you know, probably at home, he said, hey, hey, I got a good job for us in the wrestling, come on. Yeah. Well, do you think Ta Takanohana um, made the wrong decisions when he went rickshaw shopping? Or do you think it was just coincidence that he shows a couple of duds. I have no idea, you know, Takanohana is one of the most, uh, uh, you know, questionable, you, you, you don't know what, what's going on in his head. He was yeah. destined for greatness and he kept shooting himself in the leg every <laughs> time, doing yeah. the worst. You know, when he was active and I met him, that was the time when he was going to the chiropractor and he wasn't speaking to his family and he wasn't totally normal then too, but at mm -hmm. least he was Takanohana, you know. Yeah, and something yeah, yeah. here snapped. I, I really, I, I have no idea. And that doesn't mean that he has good rec recruiting skills. Although he did bring Takakesho, but you know. Well, at least Wakanohana came back from the dark side. He was always, um, he was a bit of a doomsdayer and he had his katana ready. And uh, I think there were some voices in his head at one stage, weren't there? I think the voices are still there, but maybe speaking a little less louder, but they're still yeah. there in their head, you know? They're there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the way he acted, you know, when with Takanoi, when he was, you know, and the way he kicked Haruma Fuji out, a lot of people will not forget that, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because if he wouldn't have interfered, nothing would have happened. That's right. Because this, this, this stuff, this stuff between the Rikshi, you know, and especially the Mongolians, they get rugged. That happens all the time. It's an inside thing. Nobody, you know, but then Takanoi, the idiot, went to the told yeah. with Takanoi because he, he was injured. Takanoi said, what's this? Instead of saying, I fell in the bath, you know, or yeah, the usual I, shit. He said, how about Fuji hit me? And that, that was it. And Takanohana, he's, you know, the, he is the, 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 the symbol of, of, of correctness. So he immediately went, and there's no way back. The minute you involve the police, that's it. It's finished. Yeah, that's right. The, um, the Mongolians, part of their conversation involves a bit of a bit of sure, argy bargy, bit what of happened. Takanoewa was an asshole anyway. You know, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. But we, we lost Haruma Fuji. who was, was such a, you know, he could have been Hakuo's Kashiwado. That's exactly yeah. what, what we were he missing. Was he, he was um, he, he was a nice guy too. And people have got this wrong impression that the Mongolians are horrible and violent and arrogant. Look at, why, look at Kakuryu. Look at Kakuryu. He's too nice. Yeah. If Kakuryu had a little mean streak in him, you know, he could still be active. Yeah. Very nice. true. Very true. I agree with that. Nice. Very placid. But look what happened the minute. He retired and moved to Michinoku. Look what happened to Kiribayama. Yeah. He's, he's personally coaching him. Kiribayama suddenly comes off with a 9-6 with a in Maigashira too. He never had more than four wins there. 
mm-hmm. and he's going to be Sanyaku, and he, you, could, you know, you can never tell, but this is 100% an immediate result right. of, Kakuryu, of Kakuryu taking his Mongolian brother under his wing. And I've got high him. hopes for Kibayama. I've got I high hopes have, for him. But now I do. Mm-hmm. Now I do. I thought he was going to be one of those Mongolians that goes up and down, you know? I like Chiyoshoma. Yeah, no, Chiyoshoma is ranked low. He's, he's completely different. Chiyoshoma has very limited yeah. defense. Mm-hmm. He usually does does the stuff that nobody likes. He's Aye. very, very disliked. But what I mean is he's always just floating up and down at the bottom end and always just up and down, yeah, up I and thought, down. I thought Kiribayama would be like Tamawashi floating uh, on the top part of my gosh. You know? you know, Aye, fair enough. I got shot a one to four, you know, yep. up and down because he has the skills. Usually Aye, these true. guys get beaten by when, you know, when they meet the top guys, they go back down and then they meet the lower guys, they go back up. But this Basho, he was showing excellent sumo. And he was injured on day 12, but he was still with a great record. And he kept on, and he was injured. He had a leg injury, which, of course, nobody talks about until after the basho. Then, mm-hmm. then suddenly you understand what happened to everyone. Why this guy suddenly stopped winning, you know? Because some, of them don't even, some of them don't even say they're blind in one eye until after they retire. <laughs> <laughs> so who's the most overrated rikshi? Overrated? Hmm. Mm. I think personally Takakeshu. Although mm-hmm. he's Ozeki, but I, I don't think that. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, of course, Mitake Umi. You know, but yep. oh, that, yeah. that, 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 that's not a big deal to say because you can yes. never know. He, you know, he can you one day suddenly make it, but I, he's like Wakano Sato. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll be a Sekiwake all the time, up and down, Sekiwake, Sekiwake, I think. Right. Too bad Does the Banzuke I, ever lie? The what? The Banzuke. Yeah. Does it ever lie? Like, a lot of people say, oh, oh they- sure. And, 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 and Banzuke luck is part of the thing. Sometimes, you know, you come yeah. up from Magashira 12 to Magashira 4 with a 9-6 because all the other guys lost. But but it doesn't lie for two bashos because next basho, if he's ranked too high, he's going to get yeah. cream. Mm-hmm. There's no right. joke, you know. You can, there's no, there's nothing, no luck here at all. You can be lucky once. And if you, you get promoted to Magashira 4 or 5 and you're not good enough there, you know, the, the, the Banzuku is full of stories. Like, look at yep. the last Banzuku. So many of them, you know, were over. This Banzuku is going to be very interesting, too. I, I don't know how, how they're going to work out the Sanya. Who yeah. were exactly at the top of my Gashira, because there's a, a lot of movement this time. So who's the most underrated Rikshi, in your opinion? I still say, I, I'd say Mitake Umi. No, I'm not Takeshi. I'm changing. I'm changing my mood. <laughs> because Takakesho <laughs> did make it to Ozaki. And as we all know, it's not an yep. easy feat. It's not easy no. to make it those of you. The biggest choker. <laughs> oh, that was Kayo, of course, but the Kayo is not there anymore. The biggest yeah. choker is Mitake Umi also. Yep. <laughs> do you think Kayo really choked? Uh, he, um, do, do you think he, if he became a Yokozuna, it would have been a twilight position? And, yeah, but um, he could have become a Yokozuna five years earlier. That's what I'm saying. He didn't yeah, choke he at the have, end of his career. He choked all the would, time. Would have retired for four years early. And he was an incredible Richie. You know, people yeah. are speaking about, I mean, not when you mention the old guys, he's he usually he's forgotten. I don't know why. He yeah. was an incredible, very strong Richie. And when he got a Kotenage, you know, you had to already yeah. order a yeah. place, a bed in the hospital because that's it. That's mm-hmm. right. He was, was it really, 100, 110 kilogram. Yeah, remember, I remember that. Yeah, with the, with the, yeah. with the, Checking out and he used to do with one hand, he used to do incredible stuff. I can't make apple sauce with the uh, well, yeah. you, you used to just squeeze an apple, yeah. That, that was make, yeah. apple he, sauce. he loved it, you know, because that was the time he him in Chiotai Kai at Dejima. There were four excellent Ozeki, and any one right. of them could have got the Yusho, not this time, but this funny joke. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I agree with that. No, there's, there's right. nobody, I agree. Did, you know? no, you're, you're so absolutely like, right, yeah. That's it. That's why when we argued in this pack, mm. you know, we don't even have any candidate that's the same, okay, I'm going to make the move. You know, like Mitake Ubu is making the move already for 25 years. You know, it's mm-hmm. there. It's not doing anything. Do you think it's they don't want it or they can't? Or they... I think it's nerves probably mixed yeah. with fear, mixed with, 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 you know, with being consistent. And injuries, you know, it's sumo. You can never tell who's injured and who's okay and what. Yeah, yeah. You can never tell. Well, I've got a, I've got a theory, but I think it, it's, 
probably rubbish, but it's just a, a different way of looking at it. If if they're all um, if they were all strong, then it's very hard to be inconsistent because you've got a 50 50 percent 50 50 um, chance of winning. Oh, that's but true. Yeah, right. The, uh, but it's not. I mean, it's, the, it doesn't doesn't happen. Yeah. That's, that's no, it never does. So to be able to do something good consistently is an extraordinary feat in sumo, isn't it? It's uh, just to make kachikoshi is really difficult for because someone. Because you have another added factor that, that you don't have in life. Is that the factor is the injuries. And everybody is injured, be sure. Everybody mm -hmm. is There's yeah. not a single healthy guy. And they keep saying that all the time, by the way, in the interviews, when they ask him, what about the book? He said, all of us, you know, whoever gets interviews, says, all of us has an injury somewhere. And that's that's a different thing. You know, the minute you have an injury, then you have an injury. That's a... That's not part of the factor of life when you work at, you know, when you're a singer. You're not afraid of injuries, right? Unless you take the wrong dope, you know. But that's <laughs> not injury. That's, that's just something else. Anyway, <laughs> that's part, you know, you know what I mean. You, you can never tell I what's going to happen tomorrow. You can wake up tomorrow and suddenly this guy's fusion. You, know, you, you didn't even know that something happened. It's not one of the obvious ones. The obvious fusion you can see, but sometimes the next day, and then when you watched about the, you go back to watch it and you see, wow, how did I miss that? Mm. He fell awkwardly on his foot, you know, or Ichinojo fell on his knee, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, what um, what do you think is the biggest misconception that um, fans have? Or I was going to say, what's the dumbest comment? But no, no, the, the it, biggest misconception, of course, is the is the, uh, the normal one. That everybody is fat. Yeah. Everybody is fat. Fat is not good. Uh, they're just fat and flabby. You know, I was, you, you went to, to Keiko. I went to training. I saw Wakano Sato do 300 rope skips. 300 wow. rope skips. I don't know any skinny guy that does 100 rope yeah. skips. As a normal regimen daily. As part of the, you know, the training at, 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 you know, the normal, the Japanese with the poles and the, you know, the, the suriyashi, but they skip rope. Mm. You know what? You know what kind, what kind of cardio you need for? Yeah, yeah, different? it's hard. Forget about. It. And I saw what kind of stuff, and I and I was going wow. And people said, "Listen, this is a more normal. Everyone does this." Not to mention Matawari, where they go down. You know, yeah. in, in the training where they go down, I, I saw that with my own eyes. So that is, I can't can even do sit it? down like that. Anymore. Can you do it? <laughs> I can. I can't even sit down. I'm they so close. Here. I'm so close. Like I'm yeah. so close to getting it. I. I'm so close, but that, that's months and months that's took me, you know and, what I mean? And getting my kids to sit in my back while I'm trying to do it and things, and it's not an easy feat, and right, some right. of the guys just get forced into that position as well, you know because what I mean? They, like, you know how they do it, oh, the other, guy, the other guys I, from the hair sit on them. I sit on the back, the pull a leg each and an arm each, and then it just pop, I know. There's a video the um, that's actually an Australian news uh, crew that for, goes to... Um, Big Jesse Kalu's uh, yeah. stable, and you can see it. And they they actually video a happening to one of the boys where he gets forced into the splits, and it's one of the most terrifying things I've ever watched. Because you've got about five hundred kilo a man pulling you in all directions. You're going into the splits, no matter what you do. You're going into the splits. Anyway, and they do it so easily. You know, when they I, were here when Sadagata came, we went on a TV show. They took me so I, so I, should, I could translate. And this guy was like Jay Leno, you know, and he was a late night show, <laughs> a comedian. And he was making fun of the fat guys in diapers and schmackers right. and that. And then they, they, he said, show me something they do. So I told the guys, forget about exhibition matches. Please just do the Matawari. These are guys from the Makushta. Not Kotomitsky was sitting with me, but the other guys were the, the Skebito. Right. Four of them did the Matawari together. The guy be, went white. And since the second later, Full of respect, the interview changed completely. Mm. The crowd was standing and clapping, and he immediately made a switch from the fat jokes to the wow, you know? Yeah. That was an instant success, and it was in the newspapers and the pictures because they couldn't believe it. These guys, you know, 150, 160 kilos, doing splits with their heads, touching the floor. Yeah. Like this, you know. Right. Lately, I've been able to, you know, to turn some guys. Because I, I showed them that it's like a Hollywood drama. Every yeah. Bad Basho has a sick story, mm -hmm. and we have backstories, and the guys are athletes, 
And the fun part is, is the, the bouts at five, six seconds. You don't have to sit through this, you know, boxing match with, where I, from round four, they're leaning on each other. And we're yeah. hoping someone's gonna, one of them's gonna die. You know, but this is five, six seconds point. And when it goes to a minute, then the minute is also interesting because you have the changes of the grips. And we have, you know, when you, when you learn how to look at it, it's completely different. Even the leaning, you can see how the guy is planning to do a makikai and change the grip and, you know, whatever. But we're fans. It's, it's, you know, it's, not, it's not fair. Mm -hmm. But I try to do my best. I go on national TV and I try to explain and make it more, you know, approachable and interesting. And I say, forget about it. Listen, look at this. Enho, he's 95 kilos. He's beating this guy with 150. There are no weight classes? No, there are no weight classes. You know, they have no idea because they, they couldn't care less. Nobody could. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the next. That was the next question. Does size matter? Yeah. 